Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Indira Ghosh from JNU. Today we are going to talk on the module Potential Energy Surface under the paper Competition Biology. Our learning objective is actually how you define the potential energy surface and that's the expressions and also we will try to explain to you once we calculate the energy how we optimize this energy and where are the applications potential energy surface basically is to do with a hyperspace surface and this hyperspace surface basically goes through or represent the full macromolecule or small molecular energy surface it has as it shown in the figure it has some minimum now this minima can be a local minimum like you can see there are small things called between the transition and and you can see them are written as saddle points that is the between the transition structure connecting to the equilibrium structure that's called saddle points however the global minimum should go from the minimum of one product that is a to b hence the max it must pass through maybe many saddle points but it should pass through the maxima at least and this is defined one of the small potential energy surface as i showed you here now this hyper surface how you get this hyper surface in the three dimensional pictures of it it actual dimension should be dependent on how many molecules or atoms are there in your system also it will be dependent on its rigid body motion the molecule macromolecule like protein or dna would try to rotate they will have three rotational motion they can as well have three translational motion however in our calculation of doing the energy surface calculation of energies we do not include this rotational and translational which is deal by diffusion etc hence our hypersurface should have a degree of freedom of 3n minus 6 so how this comes out how we calculate this it actually is an extension or a understanding or clear understanding of the quantum mechanical way of doing it if you look at the equation written as one it is a non relativistic time dependent form of schrodinger's equation where h presents the hamiltonian and psi presents the wave function and e is the energy functions now the function psi would be dependent on the nuclei which is r and small r is electrons however as we know very well by born oppenheimer approximation due to the fact that r the capital r nucleus moves with much slower speed than the electrons we can actually divide this equation into a multiple of h psi r equal to e r and psi r so psi can be dependent the psi wave function can be dependent only on the electron motion whereas er that means we are representing a potential surface or energy surface which composed of nucleus basically uh, what we are trying to do by making this to possible to calculate this energy surface is representation that is e of r represents the time evolution of nucleus however as we know very well we it is time, of course it is time dependent however we know very well that the motion of nuclei does not affect so much to the reactions in biomolecules because they are done mostly in the exchange of electrons not with the nucleus we can consider these to be independent of time and it can be a static surface however we must have the best representation of this time evolution of the molecule and that's how the potential energy surface comes into picture solving this ab initio methods are available under the package called gaussian games etc 
सेमी इंपेरिकल मेथड्स आर आल्सो अवेलेबल व्हिच आर कॉल्ड एमएनडीओ मोपैक एंड एमपैक एटसेट्रा नाउ दिस सॉफ्टवेयर्स बेसिकली डील्स विद द क्वांटम केमिकल वे ऑफ डीलिंकिंग द सरफेस प्रेजेंटिंग द न्यूक्लियर मोशंस इनटू सरफेस पोटेंशियल एनर्जी सरफेस एंड डील्स विद ओनली हाउ मेनी ऑर्बिटल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर अवेलेबल what we approximated is nothing but all this equation tells us that we are considering a potential surface which is basically manifest the nuclear energy and that is actually we ignore mostly however we use this call this as a force field representation and we can use our coordinates uh, as our small important electrons motion etc depending on are we using empirical calculations do we design a empirical force field or we design a quantum force field now we will here deal with a large number of systems because large number of atoms are consistent in 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 consist of in a protein or nucleic acid or carbohydrate hence what we will assume two approximation one is we will represent the force field and the potential energy surface as a representation of large atoms number of atoms also we are assuming this system each of these energy terms actually can be decomposed linearly well if they are not dependent on each other then we can probably use this approximation however in some cases where it cannot be decomposed or it is dependent on each other which has been elaborated in the end part of the slide is in calculation of electronic transition or transport of phenomena or even proton transfer we have to include really actual multiplication not really decomposition and we might even use in those cases particularly in electron transport etc or proton transfer etc we would use quantum chemical calculations or quantum mechanical calculations here i show you the name of very importantly used and majority of cases in macro molecules we use these force fields and this is called classical force field it started with a with a number with it but which i am not showing here but they belong to different school of thoughts charm developed from harvard amber developed from uh, ucsf with peter coleman and group a uh, charm developed by martin karplus's group and gromos which is presently called gromax which is developed by van goonstrand's group in switzerland these all the potential energy surfaces represent something we call consistent valence force field now what is consistent valence force field it will be more clear picture you will get later what it tells is each of these force field or this potential energy surface represent they are consistently related to the valence bonds which is sufficient to consider because we are considering biochemical reaction or biomolecular structure and these are mostly related to exchange of electrons or organization of electron changes in organization of electrons these force fields has also got back to second generation which are also consistent force field but mark has introduced many chemical small molecules in this force field and mainly it has been used as a extensible very much extensible systematic force field that is new parameters have been incorporated also it has been used for universal as a universal force field and there are some other force field which has been called as rule based force field and they are used as dryden force field which no longer much used however new force field are evolving which is called special purpose force field like for polymer nanoparticle and glass which i would not address much however they are available to use as same principle as these force fields now comes uh, as i described earlier that you have seen those different kind of force fields and my previous module has elaborated what are the functions of those basically the energy functions are nothing but represented by a mathematical expressions
and in those expressions as had been shown earlier slides that it will have internal coordinate dependent uh, function and it will have also Cartesian coordinate dependent functions. Now when we want to calculate or optimize this energy surface what we would like to see is that we must develop method which should have a geometrical method so that if we use this born oppenheimer approximation the ge geometry of the molecule must have a zero absolute temperature and this correspond to the minimum total energy so the process of finding this orientation or coordinates of the minimum energy should be called as a geometric optimization however let me make you very much clear that it's very difficult because we do not have exact analytical equation available in our hand to practically reach to those optimized energies number one number two is also important here to understand that this optimization however we call it a gen geometrical optimization is not necessary to fetch the zero point energy instead in case of biostructure function relation, evaluate biostructures equilibration, structure which should be available as a reactions, etc. It is more important to note that here we are looking for how much the structure is changing or deviating from its equilibrium motion. Hence, you will see in the previous modules I have elaborated those functions as something like starting from a crystal structure minus what they ha happen to be in higher temperature or when they are fluctuating across their equilibrium. Keeping in mind the same picture of function or mathematical expression representing the potential energy function. And remembering one more thing that analytical equation is almost difficult to arrive. It is very nice to use rather some mathematical methods like simplex method and which has been amply explained and thus optimize this kind of functions. What is simplex method? Simplex method actually minimizes using a polygon node reflection technique which is we can use expansion, contraction and search as much necessary. So we can have three moves around the energy surface and this can be, it can go on direction same and go on optimizing or find derivatives but it can move in other way around also that is it can contract, it can come back or it can shrink the space. Now, Sequential univariate system is another one to do that is it should have at least two new coordinate through this process so that that it can have a to find a minimum of a of the parabola. So two points you can actually make a parabola and this is another method. So mathematically actually uh, explanation by mathematics would be much easier here than explaining by pictorial systems. However, I have tried to explain these minimization techniques and their different type of techniques in few more slides followed. Here shows simplex method I, as I referred earlier. So, how it happens? These are not, this does not calculate a formula and calculates the gradient. It just tries to go to find two points as I said earlier and draw it should be able to find the parabola hence it tries to go how much its change of energy okay and finds when this function becomes discontinuous then it's difficult to find however if it is a continuous function if the potential surface is a continuous function it can follow this this is an example a pictorial example to find a, a simplex by simplex method an approximation is nelder meet simplex method which mathematically and computationally available for us to use and perform the minimization the first picture shows you to find three points and then it goes to the next cycle and it tries to cover as large a cycle possible and increases in that method and you ultimately go reach to the center of the uh, uh, ellipsoid so that you reach to the uh, minima. 
However, if you notice in my first slide, it was a potential energy surface goes through many of the saddle point. So, if it is not uniform as is shown in the picture, it might have a difficulty since simplex method has some limitation to utilize in the methods in the in the potential surface what we are working with. So, these are narrating the difference between the gradient informations. It does not take so that is the advantage so quickly it can be calculated and even it works for a discontinuous surface provided you have a you know it can jump from one minima to another minima but this have a highest disadvantage and that is it requires huge amount of iteration to very simple uh, functions and it sometimes gets stuck in the local point that is it, if it is able not to jump the cross the uh, circles which is uh, having a saddle points it will get stuck in the local minima. Uh, better methods available as I will uh, show you in next few slides yes. So what we are trying to do is geometry optimization as I said. So, it is to do with the function of you know x, y, z, etc. at the minimum of that energy. That is what we are trying. So, we want to an uh, actual de derivative of energy with respect to coordinates. That is precisely what we are looking for. Hence, you will have a, a, a derivative calculation and that, that helps us in the next few slides I will derive most of the finding the first gradient, second gradient and, and also finding the saddle points. Mathematically it has been represented here and geometrically or pictorially it has been represented on the uh, right hand of your the slide. So, the derivative methods you can calculate the first derivative and if it is a 0 then that is the steepness that explains the steepness of the function. Second derivative is greater than 0 or minimum it goes to either the it represents the curvature. So, if it is lower than 0 that of course gives you the direction of which the function should go. These derivative methods are always been used in the case of mathematical expression which is continuous expression. So, steepest descent method is one of the simplest method where 3n dimension that is n representing the number of atoms in the system and it can calculate the basic gradient given the potential energy expression and it can step wise it can go. So, steepest descent is used very frequently in calculation of and it normally is calculates the first gradient and successive steps it follows. However, Mathematically to represent a steepest descent method is shown here with the green color path. Now what happens if we have to calculate a little bit more than steepest descent that is the second gradient. Not only we calculate systematically second gradient can we calculate the conjugate gradient. Mathematics gives us this tool of calculation of conjugate gradient. That means simultaneously it calculates the derivatives, first derivative as well as second derivatives of different degree of freedom. So, it can calculate mathematically that we can calculate the rotational uh, form of uh, torsions like torsion angles, how they change gradients simultaneously of all of them. We can as well calculate bond length changes of gradients all of them. Now, it also can calculate with respect to coordinates and we can also calculate with respect to intra or inter uh, molecules uh, coordinate what we call bond length, bond angle and, and rotation angles. Uh, depending on that type of minimization techniques I would discuss later, we can use any one of them, okay. Uh, now I will, uh, uh, here we have two equations and I will go to your next ones to show you that if we use the conjugate gradients as it shown, the green color would follow the conjugate gradient methods. Now we go to the next slide, it will actually give you the advantage and disadvantage of this conjugate gradient. Now most often you will have a convergence obtained because relatively inexpensive way because it will actually not only calculate the gradient it calculate double gradient which is CPU intensive. However, the direction is very fixed means it always follows the least path hence faster it achieves the convergence. The disadvantage is 
as I told you, if it is a noisy function, it is not like simplex method. Hence, in noisy function, it becomes very slow and of course, it will hold and stuck in the local minima. So, you have two other methods I will just parallelly talk about to get us second and higher order of gradients and this is one method is called newton raphson method another it, it this method calculates the hazian matrix which is normally can be calculated which takes a longer time it can also be approximated from the gradient's history that is how the gradient is following up and uh, there are two methods parallelly one is uh, uh, fletcher powell method df uh, P. Another method is called BFGS. I will run through few slides to show you how it calculates. Yes, here is the function written on the top and we calculate how we are calculating the, the change of the function or del of the functions or function. And on the right hand side you see the H and two different methods how the H is calculated. That's the Hessian matrix is approximated from earlier steps run. Right? The advantage of this is that it is very fast convergence because it calculates higher orders. So, it assumes a little bit better and, and learns from its previous steps. And this type of functions are very useful when you go to the molecular flexibility calculations. The disadvantage is CPU expensive, that is true and it is also stores a lot of uh, uh, information because it keeps many steps back informations and it is not applicable to noisy function as I have told you earlier. It always gets problem with the saddle points. However, now I come to the summarization of all. So, we have steepest descent to use and on the right hand side it shows the picture pictorially how it achieves the minima. Conjugate gradient, now both the methods should go reach to the same minima as you see in the pictures. Only the pathway will be little different. We also have the next slide shows that newton raphson method and also we have adapted basis newton raphson methods. So, there are four different techniques available when you go to the software packages, you should be able to define between which ones you want to use. Now, uh, newton raphsons and, and evaluations are done many, many cases and, and BFGS uh, that is another quasi-Newton which is I say, earlier I said which assumes or evaluates Hessian matrix not calculates but just as approximate Hessian matrix and does this many evaluation has been done with this matrix as well. Okay, so till now how the basic theme or, or mathematically the uh, functions work in your software has been discussed. Now I come to very important to keep you reminded of that. Please do remember we are not dealing with a actually purely calculation of energy. We are actually empirically or semi-empirically are approximating a potential energy surface. What we require is to are is this method is applicable to every systems. We have this has gone through a many many changes and version numbers as you would have noticed in every software possible and what one does is that Few characteristics of this are kept as our rule. One is it potential should be multi-body potential. What it means is uh, as I have depicted in my previous uh, modules in force field etc. It should have characteristics of multiple linear in additional factors. So that each potential can be added up together and gives the accurate values as much possible. It must have the potential to have this potential should have transferability. What it means? It means it should not be stuck with only carbon, nitrogen and sulfur. It should have different va variable, different not only the property of atoms it should depict, it should also depict the orbitals character like sp3, sp2 etc. Also one should be able to update if I want to use nickel, co cobalt or, or some other uh, material in, in the protein structure or, or in, in enthusiasm. Most often uh, 
many metal ions do a very important role to play in function how we collect this information hence transferability has to be very much well established it should be representing the environment at least if we change the environment from water to some other or membrane etc it should be having effect on these parameters it should have a thermodynamics perspective that means we should be able to consider the whole system as a as a combination of different thermodynamic systems so because we are trying to understand the property how the biological functions happens already i have described that these functions all are additive also as i said that atom type proliferation should be available which are kept intact and always been fitted with our potential energy surface areas okay so now i am just discussing with you taking an example of a peptide which is a small peptide and how many different methods have applied at the end of uh, the slide at the end of the uh, uh, this particular module i have given the reference who, on which paper i have used this particular example it's very easy then to understand and compare between different kind of methods now there is a way of searching for one small peptide which is maybe you know this peptide is a rather a constrained peptide and this has uh, many phi psi angles and side chains are also not many but still limited numbers hence chances of having systematic search that is we change every dihedral angle every uh, bond length bond angle everything and search the conformational space that could be one idea to do second thing is should we build a model where we know very well because of gn ramachandran map which has been taught to you by our earlier module called molecular modeling that main chain of a protein or a peptide are restricted to certain almost one third of the allowed phi and psi if we vary the phi and psi from 0 to 360 or minus 182 plus 180 should we build the model and allow only to rotate or change the conformers only across those allowed region this will help us a lot so that method also have been applied third method is just monte carlo simulation pick up randomly and approach this method fourth method which has been applied by crippen's group quite aptly is find the distances between each atom and restrict them to certain extent and optimize with respect to distances not with respect to their internal coordinates other method is use a flexibility of these molecules and simulation method i will take each one example and tell you what happens now if you do the systematic search method very obviously it has to be definite end point to achieve through this method and it can be as assembled to have all the combination to start with and that is a combinatorial explosion like here is shown now if we have in this particular small peptide maybe we have around 10 dihedral angles so 10 into 2 phi and psi 20 dihedral angles plus we have another side chain rotation angles maybe another 20 so 40 dihedral angles what it amounts is to vary this each of them at 10 degree interval we must have 36 to the power 40 is the number just for the peptide imagine we have to do systematic search for a 300 amino acid protein and how big the search space will be this is the disadvantage of this technique however this technique has been applied to the same pace now let us check the second method and that is do use combinatorial explosion but you remove those which are not necessarily going to come that is take the advantage of using gn ramachandran map and other maps and it's restrict the molecules to have these small fragments available that's it this is another technique to use next would be the references given for all these methods and we go to the next one where 
we do the random search random search is something little better in time for systematic search however it tries to do all the rotatable bonds or torsion bonds and also with respect to cartesian coordinates so one assigned a monte carlo simulation with the random methods and calculates its energy and optimizes the energies in at ultimate functions okay so that reduces it's a reduction of time compared to systematic search and it searches as much as possible space references are given in this slide well if we look the disadvantage of random search and what it is is that it does not have any ultimate point because we do not know hence we pick up the uh, structure and start to optimize whichever direction it goes and it obvious reason it might generate minimized structure very often the same minimized structure and why it will happen because there would be some structures which are more prevalently happening in those peptides or in macromolecules and those conformation will be generated many number of times so random method though has a less time to consume in cpu has some restrictions and cannot surface all the surface areas or potential energy possibility of more and more larger the peptide becomes distance geometry method actually optimizes not the cartesian space but it converts this cartesian space into a distance matrix that is starting conformation it takes and distance between each of these atoms which are mostly non hydrogen atoms calculated and then optimize these distances which is much less in number than the atom coordinates what is the advantage and disadvantage the method are written in this paper in the references the next slide shows you comparative of all the methods and this is the slide which written as well as shows you one important thing is to note that most of the methods actually gives varieties or different kind of conformers and if we collect all of them which has been done by this paper they have collected all of them and found the unique structures or unique conformers are listed here now if you look at the table you should be able to see that maximum is a random dihedral search method so that gives the highest number of uh, of conformers however if you look at that whole structure and we take it to be the whichever amongst all these is the most lowest energy and define that as a global minima if at least within 3 kilocalorie above the global minima what we notice that there would be 262 conformers follow in almost every system gives you some kind of uh, of diversity of conformers for this particular small as i defined the system is called cycloheptadecal which is having almost 12 uh, torsional bond combination and structure is written in the paper one can go through this 10th issue reference so we come to conclusion however we use the potential this energy surface it is really a multi way framed so within the energy of a small uh, 12 mar peptide we still have a 262 conformers within the energy of 3 kilocalorie from global minima so what it tells us and depicted in this picture the proteins actually have many states hence we are interested on finding the two different states of equilibrium as it shown on the right hand side picture if the energy is higher potential being difficult so probability of occurrence of one set of molecules at higher energy will be much fewer than the lower hence the molecules from one state would like to come to another state if we optimize however it will be dependent on the transition state it has to go through between as i have shown potential energy surface of a system looks to be even if we put it in a combinatorial ways which is shown in the left hand side it's quite a complicated and at any point of time any of this protein dna etc should be available in almost many a state which is lower than 5 kilocalorie per mole in normal room temperature 
and that's what makes protein to be so flexible not only protein other macromolecules and existing or coexisting in different states so the here the mathematically you can calculate what is the from its fluctuation of protein one can calculate how much probability of which distribution which conformer would be available extra more and which will be available less it's been mathematically set up here from equations here we show if we convert that into energy scale this is the uh, probability distribution what we call of all the states possibly and if we use it as a uniform you get this probability distribution function which is available in the bottom of the so i would like to bring to your notice which will be important that we go why we learn and what we learn from potential surface and energy functions etc is basically at room temperature that is with respect to around 300 degree kelvin which is 27 degree centigrade proteins would have enough of kinetic energy and there would be this potential energy surface which represents its potential energy some of both should decide what should be the structure and how much it will fluctuate around this room temperature by equipartition theorem we must understand this equation before we go to the next module that this fluctuation can be estimated by boltzmann constant kb gamma t that is t is the function which is the temperature representative divided by gamma and gamma is a constant values and it is can be evaluated from the previous equation which is shown in e energy half gamma x square so uh, i would like to uh, uh, stop here by giving you the view of these equations and formulas would be utilized when we look at the flexibility of a macromolecule primarily we will take protein as an example in the next modules now we come to the same thing is shown here as a sub states and different states and kinetic interpretation of this particular boltzmann distribution function and this slide uh, explains you Uh, depending how it is dependent not only on kinetic energy but also the difference of potential energy which can be calculated from earlier and this energies and the function of this delta e is normally represented as internal energy or something like enthalpy representation which includes kinetic energy and potential energy i come to now to the summary of this module to i have been able to explain to you this potential energy surface concept how it is evolved from quantum mechanics to classical and how the method of energy minimization are not so easy to do why it is not so easy to do and many methods have been described however using those techniques mathematical techniques one can use many of the technical methods or computational methods which have been four or five of them has been uh, shown to, to be applied to one system and then compares in between that system how many conformers can be developed has been also elaborated so we come to a conclusion that proteins or macromolecules are not one conformer they actually are ensemble conform of conformers and that means this we require to understand about the properties and the function of this we require to do simulation and dynamic study of this over the period long time or many con conformers at a time either we require to develop many ensembles in one or over a period of time next modules would dealt with this type of uh, work and how the techniques have been used